Shalom y'all, welcome back to a beginning of the new semester that is taking place here at Torch Center. We're very excited to embark on a new semester of many months with classes, engagements, meetings with people, and a lot of fun things. I wanted to begin the semester with a very nice idea to explain the time period that we're in now the coming off of the heels of the high holidays and going into the seemingly dry year which is upon us. So people can be bothered by the question, the, the concept, the thought of how during the high holidays we have weeks and weeks of connection with God. We have Rosh Hashanah where we pray and we try to be judged in the greatest way. We have Yom Kippur which takes place 10 days later to allow us a final opportunity for cleansing and for atonement and to be inscribed in the Book of Life. And then we have Sukkot which is a very happy holiday. It's actually called in the Torah as Man Simchatenu, the time of our happiness and the simple understanding of that happiness is because we're on the heels of atonement and we're all cleansed, we're all you know, clean, new people and starting a new year. And then that Sukkot holiday lasts eight days and with it, with all its festivities and fun and then it ends. And then we hit a time period which is actually the longest stretch in the Jewish calendar of not having any kind of holiday festivity or anything. It's from now until Chanukah, which is a couple months, where it's a seemingly dry spell and nothing going on. And one can ask and think about how it's very easy or easier, much easier to connect during the high holidays with all the opportunities of going to synagogue and different programming and sukkot, building a sukkah, being in other people's sukkah and the mitzvah of taking the four species. But how does somebody connect to Hashem, to God in this empty, dry time, it seems to be very difficult. And the answer lies in a concept which is known as Hashkacha Pratit. It's known as divine intervention. In English that's what it translates into. And it means that although we can't always see it, and we don't live in a world where there's visible and open miracles taking place, but Hashem is not only the creator of the world and making sure that everything goes properly in the world, He's also Inter intervening in our daily lives, in each and every person's life, he's there and he's involved. And granted, a person cannot see that, you know, on a minute-to-minute -minute basis. If a person looks, they can definitely see it a lot more often. But Hashem shows us at often times, or sometimes, not always that often, uh, uh, that he's here. That he's something happens, something crazy takes place in a person's life. It's not able to be explained in any other way. And then he just, you know, that's Hashem's way of showing him, I'm here, I'm next to you, and the Hashkacha Pratit, the Divine Intervention, is still there. Uh, the story that I like to think of when I talk about this concept of Hashkacha Pratit and how it actually manifests itself in a person's life, there was somebody who I knew that was contemplating whether or not he had his elderly parents were traveling from New York to Israel, and he was contemplating whether or not to pay the three and a half thousand dollars to upgrade them to a business class ticket. And he thought about it for the few months prior to their flight and then he decided, you know what, it's a lot of money, they'll manage. And his plan was to not go through with it. When they were on their way to the airport, he said, you know what, it's really not right. It is a lot of money, but it is affordable to me and I'm going to pay the money. I'm going to surprise them. They're going to get to the airport. They're going to be upgraded to business class. And sure enough, he does that and they're ecstatic, they get to the airport, they're thanking him, they're so, so excited, and they get on the flight. Five, it's a 10-hour flight from New York to Israel. Five hours into the flight, a wire, bank transfer slash wire, comes in to this person's account for three and a half thousand dollars. And he checks into it and he sees that it's somebody who owed him money from 10 years back, who told him already 10 years ago that you know he's not paying him whatever was left of the debt and he sent him a message that today he decided that it wasn't right and he was going to pay him. So that's the idea that we're talking about where Hashem just comes into a person's life and shows the person A, you did the right thing, you did, you know, kibbut avayim, you respected your parents and you did the right thing for them and I'm here for you, I'm showing you that I'm here and I'm involved in your life. 
my family and I actually experienced a story that brings out this idea as well on Erev Yom Kippur. Erev Yom Kippur, there's a custom which is called Kaparot. People take coins, they take different amounts of money, it doesn't need to be any specific amount. It should be something substantial, it could be a quarter even, not, you know, not a penny. And they wave it around their head a few times and there's a few different things that are supposed to be said. And it's a custom, it's a way of saying that we're going to give this money to tzedakah, to charity, and that should atone for their sins on, on the right before Yom Kippur begins. So about an hour before Yom Kippur, I was running around my house realizing that I didn't have anything but 20s in the house. And somebody came to visit, I asked them if they have change of a 20, I figured I'll just use a couple dollars. And they said they didn't have. So I said, okay, I'm going to start rummaging through the cabinets, through my wallet, my wife's wallet, different purses that were in the house, and we're going to find the whatever change we have. And we're just going to have to divide it up amongst the six of us. It's my wife and I and four children. And that's going to be how we're going to do kaparot. So I went through every cabinet in the kitchen, every my po pockets, everywhere, whatever you could think of, and I laid out the money on the table and divided it by six, and it was exactly to the penny. There was literally not another penny in my house, 26 cents per person. It was five quarters and one penny for five of us, and then there was two nickels, a dime, and a, two dimes, a nickel, and a penny for the sixth person. The number 26, is known in Torah as the number of Hashem. Hashem's main name that we refer to in the Torah is Yud Kei Vav Kei, and the numerical value of Yud Kei Vav Kei, Yud is 10, He is 5, Vav is another 6, and then the last He is 5 adds up to 26. And I was beyond shocked that it's now a half hour before Yom Kippur, I'm doing Kaparot, I'm benching my children, and then I'm going to synagogue for the 25 hour fast and intense day of Yom Kippur and Hashem was showing us that I'm here for you. I'm, I'm here, I'm involved in your life, I'm with you and each one of the members of my family did kaparot with the 26 cents that was left over in the house for everybody to do kaparot. Have a wonderful Shabbat everyone and looking forward to an amazing semester.